In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as I said earlier, today we turn our attention from being prepared for Christ's second coming to remembering his first appearance as the babe of Bethlehem. It is almost Christmas. And so we turn from focusing on John the Baptist and his strident calls for repentance to meek and humble Mary and her obedient and faithful response to God's will and plan. As John is an example to all of us of what it means to be a witness to Christ, so Mary is an example to us of what it means to be a Christian. Indeed, it may be said that Mary is the very first Christian. She is, after all, the first to hear the good news about Jesus and believe. Martin Luther, quoting St. Bernard, declared there are three miracles contained in this story before us. That God and, and man should be joined in this Christ. That a mother should conceive and yet still remain a virgin. And that Mary would have such faith so as to believe that this mystery would be accomplished in her. And Luther went on to say that the last of these three is by no means the least. And think about it. The virgin birth is no major accomplishment for a God who called into existence everything and anything that exists. Now that the almighty and infinite God could dwell in the cramped confines of a limited human mortal body is more remarkable but the most amazing of all is that this young woman of all the women on earth believed what the angel said to her that she had been called to be the very mother of God and just so Mary becomes the model for Christian discipleship the person we should all strive to emulate, especially if we wish to follow her son. Indeed, in Luke's version of the gospel, Mary is the most Christ-like human being in the whole gospel story. Her words to the angel that we heard in our gospel reading this morning are a direct parallel to what Jesus will pray in the garden. Mary says, 
Let it be with me according to your word. And Jesus will pray, not my will, but your will be done. In both these cases, the ideal response to God is presented as a combination of humble trust and obedient service. And Luke the evangelist is very careful to tell the story of the angel's visitation so that the reader will be immediately reminded of Old Testament announcements of miraculous and special births where God is intervening to save God's people. Such as with Ishmael and Isaac and Samson and Samuel. In all these stories, the real focus is not on the person to whom the announcement is made, but on the child to be born. In our reading today, we hear, He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. He will be given the throne of His ancestor David, and He will reign over the kingdom of Jacob forever. So in a sense, Mary may be the central character, but this is really a story about Jesus. A story about Jesus. And yet, at the very same time, Luke's story also follows another storyline from the Old Testament. God's call of Israel's prophets and great deliverers going all the way back to Abraham. In all of those stories, there is this familiar pattern. Some sort of divine greeting, a startled reaction, and an exhortation not to fear. Then a divine commission, some sort of objection, then a reassurance and the offer of a confirming sign. Yes, we see this repeated again and again with the call story of Moses, of Gideon, of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and others. And each and all of these elements are present in Mary's call. So while this is a story about Jesus, the focus is on Mary. According to Luke, Mary is being called to a prophetic task, bearing and rearing Jesus is that task. Mary is identified as the favored one, as the one who has found favor with God. But please notice, and this is important, even before Mary says yes, she is blessed. Now this is important because it captures not only the important role that Mary will play in the gospel story, but also reveals something central to the Christian life. Yes. Mary is a model of faith because of her acceptance of the role God invites her to play as being the mother of Jesus. And throughout Luke's gospel, the willingness to trust the promise of God is the true mark of discipleship. So in the beginning, Elizabeth believes that in her old age, she will nevertheless bear John. And the disciples believe that they will fish for people. And the repentant thief believes Jesus is innocent and asks his blessing. And so on and so on. And even so, Mary believes God's promise. But what exactly is it that Mary believes? Yes, she believes Gabriel's announcement that she will bear Jesus. But before that, she believes that God has noticed her, that God favors her, that God has blessed her and has great plans for her. And this is central, not only to the gospel, but to the whole of the Christian life. The first, and in some ways the most important and most difficult thing we are called to believe is that God similarly notices, favors, blesses us. 
And once we believe that, really believe that, like Mary, we can do incredible things. Mary's trust and obedience are inspired by God's choice of her, not the other way around. Now, this is contrary to the way this fallen world operates. I mean, we live in a world that seems geared toward reward and punishment, whether at work or at school or even at home. We have been conditioned to expect people to give us only what we deserve, nothing more and nothing less. And we get frustrated when it's not that way. But blessing, grace, God's divine favor operate on a completely different logic. Blessing is never deserved, but always a gift. Blessing intrudes into, interrupts, and ultimately disrupts our quid pro quo world to announce to us that someone sees us as worthy and special apart from anything that we've done or not done. And perhaps because it is so rare, it is hard to believe. Now certainly, this is true of Mary. She is perplexed by the angel's announcement that she is favored by God. What have I done, Mary may wonder, to merit God's special notice and favor? But that, of course, is exactly what blessing is. God's unmerited, undeserved regard and favor. And as the blessing sinks in, Mary is able to open herself up to the work of the Holy Spirit to use her to bless the whole world through her willingness to carry Jesus which is why we all need to notice that before Mary says yes, she is blessed. You see, too many people today have a hard time believing that God really favors them as well, or, or that God even notices them for that matter. And at least at times, most all of us here have wondered if God really notices us. I mean, at work, school, at home. I mean, these can seem like such mundane things, hardly worth God's attention. And yet, in this story, we hear about God noticing and blessing someone who, by all accounts, is an absolute nobody in the ancient world. I mean an unwed, peasant, young woman. Really? Really? And yet, when this nobody, young girl, believes God's blessing and accepts God's favor, the world begins to turn and indeed has never been the same since. Also notice that Mary is not blessed because she's going to be the physical mother of Mary. No, but rather because Mary is favored, chosen, because God has intervened in her life, called her, she believes God's word. Thus, whatever special favor is given to Mary, it is divine favor that we all can share as we follow her example. Granted, we cannot all be the physical parents of Jesus, but, but we can believe that God's word will be fulfilled and that truth can be born in each and in all of us we too can bear God's Word. We can let God's promise take flesh and blood in us. And this is important enough to Luke and to Jesus that they both bring it up again later in the same Gospel account. In Luke 8, 
Jesus tells a crowd of people, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. And then when his earthly family is to be commended for their faithfulness to him, Jesus says that all people may be members of his family if they trust the word of God as his mother and brothers do. And finally, in the 11th chapter of Luke, Jesus is teaching a crowd of people when a woman calls out, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that suckled you. Now this is a colorful way of, of saying how blessed to be your mother. This woman seems to think that it would be wonderful to be the mother of Jesus because Jesus is such a great man. And the worth of women, particularly back then, was often determined by the quality of sons they produced. But Jesus declares, blessed rather are those who hear God's word and obey it. So Jesus is saying, my mother is blessed, but not because her womb bore me or because her breast nursed me. She is blessed because of her devotion and faithfulness to the Word of God. And we can also allow God's Word to take shape in us. So Mary turns out not simply to be the mother of Jesus, but also an ideal role model for all of us who would follow her son Jesus. A servant of God who embodies trust and faith and faithfulness. So then, as we hear Mary's story, we are to be reminded that we are also highly regarded by God. That all of us and each of us in truth are God's favored ones and called and commissioned to hear, believe, and respond to God's blessing wherever we are. And so, in these hectic days before Christmas, imagine where you will go this week, what you might do, with whom you will meet, and how in each and all of these circumstances, God is noticing you and blessing you so that you might be a blessing to the world. Now, you may not believe that, as so many of the other voices that we hear in our daily lives conspire to make us feel like nothing and nobody. But this story and the fourth Sunday of Advent remind us that God has noticed that God has favored, has blessed us, so that we in turn might bless and change the world. And so may we, like Mary before us, say, let it be with me according to your word. For this is the first step in living into and bearing the blessing of God. Amen.